very good morning to you and thank you so much for keeping it to NBS Television. This is the Morning Breeze, your most authoritative uh, morning current affairs show. And uh, this being a Thursday, we talk about matters economics. And uh, here, humbled to be with the Permanent Secretary and Secretary to the Treasury, Mr. Ramadan Govi, as we take you through what is happening with the economy, how we are performing, and a lot more about the concerns that you have continued to raise. It's a pleasure having you, Mr. Govi. Thank you. Mildred, always. Always a pleasure yeah. having you here yes. to talk about the economics that works uh, yeah. for a bit. And the last time you were here, it was a bigger concern about the performance of the Ugandan shilling against the dollar. Mm. Um, I would like to ask, have we entirely stabilized? And what's the overview of how we are performing economically as a country? Okay, okay. thank you. I should ask you, what, what do you see? Stabilizing a little bit the dollar rate, but I would want to look at it from your perspective. The economy, uh, I should tell you that um, it has actually recovered mm -hmm. from the, the shocks which have been uh, affecting us since, uh, I think, the COVID time. You know, with the COVID, then we had uh, some drought, we had uh, some floods, we had the Ebola, we had the... Uh, these interest rates we increasing, we had inflation increasing. We have uh, withstood all of those. And mm. um, I should tell you that now we are looking at 6% growth this year, um, end of June. The running financial year? Yes. Okay. That's the projection. And the size of the economy is projected to expand to over 53 billion dollars and um, you are looking at inflation which is now under control below the target or within the target you are looking at uh, the export receipts rising by over 55 percent to now mm. 7.6 billion dollars you are looking at uh, uh, also, the FDI, um, those foreign direct investments coming in are growing quite impressively by about $1.9 billion mm. to where we were the last time I spoke to you. Mm. And these are mainly coming in the oil and the gas sector. They are coming in the uh, agro industry. They are coming in, uh, in the minerals uh, sector. So they are widespread. They are not uh, necessarily in one area. You are looking at uh, also the jobs. We are now tracking the jobs. Are we creating jobs or are we destroying jobs? I should tell you that the latest report we have indicates that we've created more jobs in this fiscal year. About than, uh, how many jobs have than, been created? Uh, uh, His Excellency, the President, will be uh, 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 reading the, the State of the Nation address. He's going to give you most of this uh, data. Mm. And also my minister, uh, 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 when he's presenting the budget, yeah. in about a fortnight. Mm -hmm. um, so the numbers have, uh, have really uh, 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 improved across board. Okay. What explains um, this seemingly positive um, economic performance? Good economic country. management. What, what, do, a what, what do you think? <laughs> yes. So we have uh, seen uh, the drivers of this growth coming from the government interventions. Mm. Government did, I think, a good um, decision to actively participate in financial inclusion. Mm. This parish development model the MIOGA, the UDB money, the money which we get through different uh, financial institutions is to get to, to people so that they can invest in various areas has been uh, uh, doing some good work. But of course also uh, the fact that inflation has gone down mm. has helped to raise aggregate demand, especially in areas of manufacturing and the the fast moving goods. We have seen a uh, slightly, uh, you know, faster growth there than in the previous years. Mm -hmm. Don't forget also uh, the good weather which we've had 
that has driven agriculture. Agriculture has been performing uh, quite well. But the big one is the oil and the gas. It's bringing in big money. Uh, the investments to get the oil out of the ground mm. next year mm. have been uh, very good at driving growth. When you look at HICOP, HICOP now is in uh, advanced stages. The, 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 the project we are doing to get the pipeline, the crude pipeline, which is going to export uh, the oil, all of the companies, the four shareholders, Total, Sinoc, Unoc, and the, the Tanzanians mm. have all contributed equity. And we have also put in additional equity contribution because the debt delayed, um, the debt component of about $1.18 billion delayed. So we've been uh, covering that by contributing more equity. That's why the, the budget you're asking me, one of the numbers is to capitalize further UNOC to contribute, okay. as I'm going to show you. And then uh, now we were in Beijing recently uh, looking at, uh, uh, at the same preparedness, preparedness of the companies which are manufacturing the, the pipes and the all these other uh, equipment they are going to use. They are all ready. We found them at the port uh, shipment must now be underway. So um, we are very optimistic. Then we have also been negotiating the refinery. We are at the tail end. Very soon the FID will be announced for the oil refinery. Uh, not forgetting the various investments which are associated with the, with the, with the, the exploration, which is ongoing in the Albertine region. It's a beehive of activities with many companies bringing in big money to okay. take advantage. And this is driving growth. When you talk about a 6% growth, that is um, close to just 1%, more uh, less by 1% the projected growth by the president, at least according to the last uh, State of the Nation address. And uh, my biggest question or concern would be on how we are performing with our trade balances, especially uh, with the government doing the export promotion and import substitution agenda? Mm. As I've told you, our exports have grown uh, beyond our expectations because growing by 55%, about 55.1%, they have helped us to uh, reduce the, 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 the trade deficit. Mm. Our balance of trade is still uh, uh, in a deficit, but the deficit is, is reducing as the numbers will be uh, concretized in the various policy documents which will be presented. The key driver of this has been gold uh, exports, but also the growth of coffee, uh, the growth of uh, the agricultural produce, and then the emergence of manufactured value-added products, especially to the regional market, and, the, and also the, the, the impressive growth of tourism uh, sector. It has recovered um, and uh, has been bringing in nearly $2 billion. Mm. And, um, and also Ugandans working abroad in remittances, you know, those who bring remittances here. And uh, those ones have always been uh, very supportive when bringing in the dollar. So that, that's why in Uganda we, we don't uh, suffer a lot in, in dollar shortage. And mm. it explains the plateauing of the for an exchange rate, uh, despite the, the shock, which I told you last time, yeah, which, which was we, okay. were, we were facing. Yes. All right, let's go to the guest of what every Ugandan is currently talking about. A proposed budget of about 58 trillion shillings in no time was shot up by about 14 trillion shillings to get us to 72 trillion. Mm -hmm. For one, on one hand, would be excited that our budget is growing, but on another hand, the fears would be, where is the money coming from? But before we even get to the money, how did we expand from a 58 mm. trillion proposal mm. to a 72 trillion? Yeah, this is a, this is a very good question because they, I've been uh, watching and uh, I see debates. I don't know where Ugandans get some of the debates they make w when they don't have the, 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 the facts. These are the facts. Mm -hmm. The budget had been... Uh, maintained 
at the level of this year's budget in the BFP, budget framework paper. Mm. Then when Parliament received the framework paper and interacted with in the ministries, departments and agencies, they made some recommendations on key and funded areas. And we increased the budget from 52 trillion to about 58 trillion mm. when we submitted the detailed estimates. Then when we were finalizing the budget uh, last month mm. to submit it to the core agenda so that parliament can be able to finalize uh, the appropriation, about three key things emerged. Okay. Number one was to pay off the debt with Bank of Uganda, government has with the Bank of Uganda. This is intended to strengthen our central bank to continue doing the good job they are doing of maintaining macroeconomic stability. But the bank had the I think a debt which had accumulated to 7.8 trillion shillings with the government over the, the years. Mainly uh, when we, they funded us to, 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 to continue funding the, the budget when yeah. there was no revenue during COVID, the local down and so on. So a decision was taken by government to pay fully the Bank of Uganda. So 7.8 trillion fully to the debt? To, the, to, to, to clear? To BOU. To BOU, yes. Yes, to clear the debt we have with them. Mm. The beauty with this is that much as this goes to the government uh, balance sheet as debt, we actually don't pay that money. So the market shouldn't get excited that we are going to go to the market to borrow 7.8 trillion shillings next year. No. What we've done, we've issued government papers to BOU mm. of different tenor. These are bonds, mainly. No, okay. uh, very few treasury bills, mainly bonds. We have issued uh, uh, them to them. They are going to keep them. Whenever there is a need to mop out money from the market, that's when they will issue these papers. It's not that they are going to go next year, you know, the, the year is beginning in July. Some people think, oh, now we are going to borrow this money next year. No. The money we are going to borrow for budget purposes uh, from the domestic market is much lower than what is reflected on the paper. These 7.8, they are, we are going to issue them as bonds, to BOU, yeah. keep these papers. Wherever they see that there is excess cash, excess liquidity in the economy, which needs mop-up. They use them, they issue them, so that the banks can uh, give them the money, and they give the banks the papers. Okay. And then they keep the money. That means the money has been taken out of the of market. Circulation. That is number one. Okay. And uh, it explains more than half of the increase in the core gender. Because from 58 plus a 7 yeah, point it was about 5, 13. so it's about 65.5 yes. trillion, okay? So 13, uh, the, the addition was 13.8 trillion. Okay. Of that, 7.8 was BOU paper. Mm. Then number two, we are also starting implementation of our strategy to grow the economy tenfold. We want to get the economy of Uganda expand by tenfold by 2040 in the remaining 15 years. That is our ambition. That's from what figures to what? We're currently looking at... We uh, are at about, you can say, $55 billion. Mm -hmm. By 2040, we want the Ugandan economy to be $550 billion in simple math. Okay. Now, this madness, as some people may think about it, has a very good plan. And the good plan is in the areas of ensuring that 
we get the ATMs to drive the growth. Agro-industrialization, mm. tourism development, mineral development, including oil and gas, and science, technology, and innovation, what you call the knowledge economy. Those are the four areas we are looking at to drive this growth. We've been having an economy which is concentrating a lot on the quantitative growth, on getting more people to grow potatoes, to grow coffee, to grow tea, to grow this and that. Mm. We are now moving to, on top of those quantitative growth, we look at the qualitative reap. How do we get the economy to grow qualitatively? Value addition. So in this <coughs> core agenda, a big chunk of this money has been allocated in areas which are going to drive the ATMs. Those are four things. Mm. And uh, they are across board. I can, uh, I can open a, up a document and I read them out for you if time allows and, and you would like to, to know them. But also, we've uh, enhanced the wages of the low rank officers serving in security forces by 25%. The target is to have these officers enhanced in four years. So the 25% is going to be split across four years? No. Or? 25, uh, whatever figure we are looking at, hmm. we are going to do it in uh, four years. Okay. We have been deliberate in these enhancements. Last time it was scientists. Then the generals. Hmm. Those who were from, uh, uh, I think, Major General. No, no, not from Major General, from Major. Hmm. From Major up to the General. They were enhanced. Now we are enhancing the from captain downwards by 25%. And uh, this has been uh, also included in this. What is the intent of this? The intent is to gradually go on enhancing the core human resource serving the government of Uganda keeping this economy work because we, ho we really think as government that with the security guaranteed, with the infrastructure gap, gaps closed, as you know, as I told you last time, we are doing the SGR, we are doing the airports, we yeah. are doing the, the roads, we are doing the water system, the transport system by building Buka support and others. We are getting the aerodromes aerodromes into the, uh, the, the tourism destinations. We would want also to guarantee the security of the country. And uh, our brothers and sisters in the security uniforms, that is in the Uganda People's Defense Forces, in uh, the Uganda Police Force, in uh, prisons, in uh, internal security organization, in external security have been enhanced. Okay. those lower cadre. Hmm. And then uh, the rest were, uh, uh, were really catering for the interest to pay the debt, about uh, 400 billion shillings. So that, that, that's the core agenda which we took uh, to Parliament. Uh, it is a, a good initiative to get the economy to, to expand and work. And uh, the civil servants have been a center of focus. We've had a number of demonstrations coming through severally. When are we thinking about them? They are coming. They are next in line. They are next in line. We couldn't do everybody, but you will see. Like I told you last time, mm. that uh, these are generals, and you, you were saying, but uh, are the generals the ones who are going to be fighting? Mm. What about these others? We said we, we are doing it in a phased manner. They will come, and now they have come. Then uh, us, the civil servants, I'm one of them. Mm. We shall now come on board later. Okay. 
Oh, oh, okay, that's going to be a very good thing to be looking at. But there's some uh, reallocations that were actually made mm -hmm. during this budgeting process. Yes. What explains some of these? The budget, as I've told you, ev over and over again, is subject to repurposing. Mm. Removing money from areas which have ceased to be priorities to areas which are of greater priority. We first look for money within the budget, the base, to cater for priorities. When we realize we have exhausted those sources, that's when we go to look for new resources. So in that case, therefore, the budgets of every institution except those which are protected, mm -hmm. like education, like health, like security, like uh, NMOs, you can't cut money for medicine and so on. Yeah. There are those sectors which are protected. With the exception of those ones, all other entities were revised downwards, their operational costs. Some of which didn't go down well with finance. What uh, could have explained of this uh, of challenge? Course, of course, you know, who wants to be a loser? But in a budget, in a budgeting process, there must be losers and winners. Because the budget must balance, and it must balance by fully funding the key priorities, or at least reasonably funding them. So we have been uh, looking for resources to, to kickstart the tenfold growth. Mm. And those areas which, for example, we reduced some of the money on infrastructure, on roads, construction of new roads. The, we said these projects should wait. Let us put more money in maintenance of roads which we have already built. And also let us move some of the money from roads to oil and gas, from roads to tourism development. That's why you see that tourism, which is served by different sectors, has been strategically supported mm. in this budget. Mm. We've uh, supported the Uganda Wildlife Authority with over 100 and uh, I think 4 billion shillings so that they can get this nanny tax revenue from the tourism destinations and build the, 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 these tourism attractions. We have uh, supported for the first time the foreign embassies to start effectively uh, uh, branding and selling and marketing Uganda in those uh, 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 capitals where they are representing us. Commercial we have diplomacy. started with 10 of them. And uh, each of them will receive on average about 5.5 billion shillings to do commercial and economic diplomacy, but also improve our, our the face of Uganda there. Wouldn't want to go and Uganda House in London or Uganda House in New York has a lift which is dancing mm. as people are moving. All those things are going to be revamped. Mm. A tourist, a potential tourist has come to visit our embassy to get a visa and is seeing that uh, the, 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 the lift in which is standing to take him to, to the next floor is bobbing around. He might uh, change his mind. So we are supporting now our foreign embassies to do commercial and then we're also supporting the infrastructure building. Mm. Actually, in this budget, we have prioritized mainly the tourism infrastructure okay. other than these other infrastructures. What do you say about some of the allegations that some of these reallocations were made or used as conduits that even in some agencies, they are accounted for but yet have some particular permanent budget. So it's more of an extra conduit, but you put it under the budget. What I do you have to say I about would that? want whoever, whoever has that information, please bring it to me. I will fetch that money tomorrow and, and put it, it to a proper use. If it is there, kindly bring, it, bring that information to me. So the re rationale for Personal. the reallocations was specific on the key areas that you Absolutely. talked about? Absolutely. Absolutely. All right, this is where one would ask, are we still pursuing fiscal consolidation agenda or have things changed? Is mm. now budgeting uh, being able to determine or guide the planning process? 
Absolutely not. We are on fiscal consolidation agenda. And it has three elements still, as I told you. Number one is stepping up revenue collection. In this very budget, we've increased revenue, domestic revenue, to 62 trillion, uh, rather 32 trillion shillings, 32. Mm. Mainly in areas of the both tax and non-tax, there has been growth or there will be growth in revenue. That's why we've uh, been very clear to our, our partners in development, the overall taxpayers, that if you have been uh, having a way of uh, cheating government, because tax belongs to government, we don't tax people's money. We only tax what belongs to government, the contribution the, the state should have Expect. so that it can uh, provide the services that you need, provide the security, ensure that you have infrastructure, ensure that there is a health system, ensure that there is a, uh, a state, there is a state to put in order. Okay. Some people do not appreciate that. They say, where is our tax by the way we are paying? If you want to know... Accountability. Where, yeah, you know, if you want to know uh, that tax is actually working, go to certain areas where the state is incapable of doing its job. You can't do anything. You will not <coughs> be able to drive that car. You will not be able to, to build a house and so on. So the revenue mobilization is one of them. Mm. Number two is expenditure rationalization ensuring that expenditure is going to those critical areas. That's what they call uh, the, the, the fiscal consolidation. And as, as far as I know, and I've told you, the budget has grown in such a way that it is pursuing more growth of the economy so that we can be able, and by the way, let me tell you, uh, Mildred, the first and the primary way of sustaining debt is ensuring that the economy grows. Yeah, because then you can be able to get the money to pay it. Economy growing is halfway. The, some of those rich economies have debts which are above their GDP, higher than their GDP. But their population is, you, you will not even, if you Google, what do Japanese say about the economy? You will not hear any Japanese talking about debt. And yet the debt in Japan is 248% of GDP. In Uganda, you will hear a lot when we are debating debt at about 48% of GDP. And we are saying, ah, now it's going to 50, 51% of GDP. Two different economies. We, yeah. are in, we are in trouble. Why do you think that is the case? It's because in uh, countries like ours, we are not used to having the economics defining the lives of people. Mm. They have other emotions, so many emotions. Maybe okay. the politics is not working for them. Maybe they, but I want to assure you that fiscal consolidation is on, but also managing so debt, okay. controlling debt. Mm. That's why, we are still, you know, in Uganda, unlike other jurisdictions, and this you can ask our, our creditors, those who lend us money, we only borrow when we can afford. If we can't afford, we don't borrow. This year, there is debt which Parliament approved for us to go and get, which we we have not And what explains acquired. the continuous debt rollover every other time that we keep planning for? Debt rollover is the, a global way of managing domestic debt. Because it would be like, you pay off now, then you borrow again from that person. Mm -hmm. Because you are, <laughs> you are in the same market. So what you do, you ask those who want to continue uh, 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 holding those papers and you pay them the interest. 
So you, instead of paying the, the, the principal of the domestic debt, those who bought the papers of government 20 years ago, they roll them over, they carry the papers further, say by five years more, and then you, they earn the interest. So you are paying the interest and you retain the money which you would have paid those people and then you borrow from them again. How so it's a it? smarter way of uh, managing domestic debt and yeah. it is done everywhere in the world. Sorry about that. How about the monies that we have borrowed that we continuously talk about, the parliamentarians will talk about, money is borrowed but the project is yet to even kick off yeah. and yet we have to continue paying interest mm -hmm. on such. Why don't we first do every feasibility analysis, pay off whoever we need to and mm -hmm. then borrow for work to immediately start? There are also some uh, facts I want to, to give on that. Number one, um, whereas the challenge of an disbursed debt is real, that you may have you may have had money you have borrowed abroad, especially external, from World Bank, from ADB, African Development Bank, from Islamic Development Bank, from different banks. We, mm. we borrow money and now the projects are, are, are not, uh, they are not, uh, you know, consuming the money. Whereas that is true, we don't pay interest on that money. That one also has to be clear. We only pay interest on disbursed loans. We don't pay interest on committed loans. We only pay what we call commitment fees. Which and are also uh, not in the lower, sec uh, lower scales. No, it is, it, is very, it is very long. But it is still money we but could have saved But it is money which, which we are wasting. Exactly. Because you will find that in the portfolio which we have now about $3.7 billion undisbursed, you will find we have to budget about $400 billion of commitment, of fees. commitment fees. That money would have used it to do other things. If we had uh, committed all of the money, I, I mean, which w if we had disbursed all of the money. This has been a, an old problem we've been having of projects which were not ready, but we borrowed for them, or projects which were ready, but were, were you know, on, along the way they faced a number of challenges. Mm. How are we dealing with this? We, we have now dealt with it going forward by ensuring that only those projects which have completed public investment management analysis or appraisal now get into the budget. And therefore, they are the ones we borrow for. All right. Um, um, P.S., we will be taking a very short commercial break. Mr. Ramadan Gov is still here with us as we delve deeper into conversations regarding Uganda's sector performance. I know that many of you have reached out and asked how far with the IFRIS and the conversation with the traders. Good morning to you once again. Thank you so much for keeping it NBS Television. You're still watching the Morning Breeze as we bring you the latest of what's happening in and around the country. And of course, Thursdays is economic conversations. I have uh, the Permanent Secretary and Secretary to the Treasury uh, still munching up on the numbers that we have. We were talking about a 72 trillion budget and uh, uh, still with you, Mr. Ramadan Govi. Where is this money going to be coming from? Because when we get to look at even when we increased our revenue target, our revenue collection target, our tax to GDP ratio still lingers around 14%, lower than what we have maybe in Rwanda, 16%. Mm. Kenya has about 18%. Mm. Where is the money going to come from? Doesn't this mean borrowing? Um, about 53% of this money is going to come from taxes. That is 32 trillion shillings. We have budget support, which is grants and uh, some external borrowing of 1.4 trillion. We have the petroleum revenue. We are using part of our money we have been getting from, uh, from uh, petroleum uh, related um, taxes and uh, royalties. We are going now to use about 115 billion. Uh, mainly to revamp the infrastructure in the city. Mm. We are going to have uh, 
local revenue, the local governments collecting about 293 billion. Then domestic borrowing is going to be about uh, nine, nine trillion plus uh, the other which I told you the papers you're going to issue to Bank of Uganda, 7.8 trillion. That one is not for necessarily uh, going to the market next year, but uh, the nine we are going to borrow for the budget. Then we have the project support, what we call project support. This is external borrowing for projects like a standard gauge railway, like the meter gauge railway. For meter gauge, we are using government money, but those roads, uh, dams, these power lines, we are putting up different projects, projects for water, for production, and water for, for, for home consumption. We have uh, uh, projects in health, building some health facilities, some also revamping schools, mm. about uh, 9.6 billion, a rather trillion, 9.6 9 trillion, of which about 2.8 trillion are grants, it's not uh, 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 loans. Mm. And then uh, finally, and these are now numbers below the line, it's not necessary that we are going to, to go and get money, about 12 trillion for debt, do, the domestic debt refinancing, that rollover you talked about. We are mm. going to roll over about 12 trillion. Instead of paying, we shall stay with it and we only pay uh, interest. So that's how the budget is going to be uh, financed. Whereas this could be a bit impressive, how much, you talk about uh, about 53 that 53 is going to be coming percent, domestically. Yes. yes. And uh, already domestically, uh, we are going to be having a borrowing of 9 trillion shares. Yes. Every time you mention government borrowing domestically, I am thinking about the private sector. Mm. Because we always talk about Uganda is a private sector-led economy. The bank will not view looking at uh, giving Mildred money and not give money to government. That means you're mm. crowding me out. Mm. Yeah. How are you controlling that? We have, uh, we have uh, been managing it well in the past two or so years, you have seen the yield curve plateauing. It's a flat curve. The interest rates have not increased. Why? Because we do strict modeling to ensure that we only pick that money now from the domestic market, which uh, the private sector does not need or cannot afford anyway. Because- look, How do you mean? How do you mean does not need or cannot afford? You have uh, the banking sector now having about 60 or so trillion shillings. Okay? Mm -hmm. And of this, you will find that the private sector perhaps would need less than half or half of that. And uh, the, by the way, the financial sector itself is part of the economy. So when we, as long as we don't get those uh, bills and bonds and issue them at any rate, for example, we have been refusing money uh, uh, which the banks want to lend us at exorbitant rates because we know it will reflect on the private sector. Mm -hmm. Once they increase the, 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 the coupon rate and we take that money, it means that now they have, you have set the standard at yeah. which the private sector must Can borrow. borrow. Mm. So that's why you see that uh, despite the Bank of Uganda uh, raising the CBR to fight the inflation and also us going to the market to borrow, I've told you the yield curve, the, this is the curve which explains, which plots the rate at which government has been borrowing has remained has remained flat. It's not rising. Actually, there have been a periodic uh, uh, reductions in the in the interest rates. So it's because of the, that uh, that uh, that control we are having as government mm. on our appetite. Sometimes we say no. This quarter, let us release less than getting money at 17%. Sometimes the banks would want to 
you know, the, we auction these papers, and the banks would want to lend us at 17% or so. We say, no, we shall not take that money. And that's, that, that's actually the, the, the mode we are going to continue using. So out there, I'm really telling the market that don't... That, that the banking sector has more money than we, the private sector, oh can yeah. be able to borrow oh from yeah. them. Oh yeah, okay. especially at the price, the, 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 the going price. They have more money. They are sitting on uh, mountains of money. But uh, there have also been in our financial stability analysis, indication is that there is a high concentration now in the banks to banks, mm. uh, banks relying on other banks, and also banks relying on government securities. Okay. That concentration risk. And we are working on reducing it in the medium term by controlling the borrowing domestically. So we shall go for only that money which, which we need, how but not which we want. How much percentage of domestic debt are you paying up for this financial year? Would because that also what speaks do you mean? to how much do we have in terms of domestic debt currently? Currently. Yes, mm. and how much of that are we actually going to be able to pay? Uh, because if um, you have my money mm -hmm. and uh, you pay me, that means I'm going to engage in more economic activity mm -hmm. and that will contribute generally to the growth of the economy. Within the budget, we had the programmed about 4.7 trillion shillings mm. to borrow domestically this, this year. Then we revised it a bit by 1.6 trillion. We added on 1.6 trillion uh, to cover for partly the money which we were supposed to borrow abroad, but wa was very expensive, but also to ensure that we, we, we end the year uh, by not compromising on our growth drivers. But um, generally, the domestic debt, true, has grown in recent years relative to external debt mm -hmm. in terms of debt servicing because uh, external debt is relatively cheaper. It's bigger in a, in a, in a, in a, in quantity. In a, in a quantity, but relatively cheaper. But also you need to understand the, the other cost, the implicit cost in terms of your uh, reserves you have to spend paying the external debt. So it has to be a balance of the two. Bottom line is, those who are in charge of uh, both the fiscal and monetary, we are coordinating ourselves effectively to ensure that the, 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 the debt, much as it is programmed, does not hurt okay. the economy. Well, let's look at uh, the recent past. It was about eight days ago when Moody's rating dropped us from B2 to mm. B3. Mm. You would help break it down a little bit for the viewers who may not be able to understand it. But for me, the biggest concern is on our credit worthiness and how this rating does directly communicate to mm. our potential investors. You earlier talking about FDI is growing, mm. but what does this mean if we get to be dropped in ratings from B2 to B3? Don't lose sleep. The we are uh, uh, still among the highly rated sub-Saharan African economies. Of course, globally, economies have been facing downgrades because of the recent shocks which have been uh, uh, ongoing. Um, the interest rates have increased across the world. You'll find it right from the United States to UK to Japan to the now to the emerging economies to, to, of China, India, and so on, now to the lower economies, there, are, there have been uh, challenges in terms of the debt servicing mm -hmm. because the debt servicing cost has increased. And this uh, automatically, because you see, mod modis, they look at uh, the parameters, the various parameters, those instruments which uh, 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 measure the affordability of debt external and domestic, and uh, they come up with the, with the rating. We are B3 uh, stable from B2 negative. It, it is a slight downgrade, mainly driven by their anticipation that now, with a reduction in concessional debt, availability of concessional debt, mm. which they are, I think, 
tying to the, the conversation we are having with the World Bank over the Anti-Homosexuality Act. They, they, they were not sure that we shall get more new money from the World Bank. But um, uh, uh, I didn't have time to talk to them when, when they met my team in, in, in Washington and also uh, mm -hmm. when they followed, up, they followed up here. But I should have told them that, look, we are at the tail end of resolving this matter with the World Bank. But that, that is a risk which is, is, is with us, still with us. Because World Bank last year told the world, they would not be we shall us not money. give Uganda new money until they have assured us that they will not discriminate against uh, the homosexuals. Now, we, we've been uh, working on the measures to show World Bank to, to, to commit and prove to the World Bank that we are going to be able to, to, to do this. And when we were in Washington last month for the spring meetings, we, had, we reached a technical agreement that what we have is sufficient. And uh, we are now working on the next steps of getting the top management of the bank and the board to look at our case. And mm -hmm. so once that is out of the way, you will see th these ratings will change, will change. It's mainly that risk plus the debt service because they mm -hmm. are saying once you have that risk and you don't get concessional money, where will you get the money? To pay your Commercial. Debt. They are saying you are likely to go commercial. And are you, as you increase commercial, which already has grown, and also domestic, then that debt will be more expensive than when you are getting it from World Bank. But now, once we get out of that risk, we shall, we shall go back and stabilize. So there's no need to, to really lose sleep. We are in charge, we are in control of our destiny. You're still doing we lots of explanation. We are controlling our, 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 our borrowing. Okay, our time is for spent, but one particular issue that I cannot forget is that um, not too long, uh, the traders met the president after various uh, meetings with the Ministry of Finance, Ministry of Trade mm. and others, and it was still stunned, the president maintaining that IFRIS will be here. It's one of the uh, measures that you're putting in place to ensure that the taxes will be collected as effectively as possible. But also the, um, the sort of strikes that we saw clearly communicated a lack of confidence from the traders themselves or from the taxpayers. Mm. How far with your conversations with IFRIS and uh, also how then are you going to be able to build taxpayers' confidence? I met the traders myself first when the president sent me there. I met them with my team, the director of economic affairs and the commissioner general of URA. And I told the traders exactly what the president told them, that IFRIS is not a tax by and in itself. Mm. IFRIS is a system which we have brought to ensure that those of you who pay tax are not disadvantaged by those who don't pay. Because when you have an economy where the playing field is not leveled, some are paying tax, others are cheating, that's why businesses fail. Because that means you, who's paying tax, you will pay, you will have to charge a higher price. Mm and the other one is undercutting you because he has avoided or evaded tax. Yeah. With the IFRIS now, there's no chance for people to evade tax. And it's going to level the ground. And I told them, please, this is good for you as traders. Good for everybody in the business. If you want your business to survive. One of the reasons why businesses in Uganda have been failing so much is because of that. A number of people have not been paying tax. They, s they, they, they avoid, they sell at a lower price. And you wonder, we went to China together. We brought these goods. This guy is going back. When I'm still here, struggling with the stock I brought, the inventory, what is the secret? What is he doing? They start to think that the other one has juju and mm. no. The guy was just taking advantage of not paying tax. He sells at a lower price than you, and he makes more money. Now we are saying with IFRIS, all those who, who are VAT registered, 
we will be we shall be able is because it's like a CCTV. Whoever is in the room will be recorded by the, this camera, and and it will record the invoices and the yeah. receipts. So on both the supply and on the, on the demand side. And as a result of that, we shall be able as government to collect all the revenue due, f due for government, but also as private sector, you will have fair competition. Mm. Now, there were a number of issues they raised, which were genuine. Yeah, the VAT threshold, uh, the No, that one is not genuine. Well. VAT threshold will stay. It is uh, 100 and... What uh, doesn't make it genuine? From one, because they because were thinking about we 150. Have, we have one of the highest thresholds in the region. It's only Tanzania which beats us. Mm. We have one of the highest thresholds. You know, the higher the thresholds, the better for the taxpayer. Mm. We have mm. one mm. of the highest. Number two, the 16% they were talking about, only Kenya had 16%, but with a much lower threshold. Now Kenya is moving also, is increasing the, the rate to 18%, because all other, other countries in the region are paying 18 There's no way Uganda now can go lower than that, or increasing the threshold much higher. It will not, it will not work. I, and I told them, the, the only genuine issues they had raised mm. were number one, those people who retail goods when they are manufacturers. That's a genuine concern. Mm. And I told them, we are going to study it and get a solution to it. Number two was this, um, the tax on, on textiles, I think, where we charge in kilograms the three point five dollars or the whatever is higher uh, the kilograms mm. uh, the tax on, 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 on the textiles on the fabric in the kilograms and I told the HE the president that sir this one we are going to study and see how how long can we give our manufacturers because that tax is intended to protect our manufacturers here who are coming into textile industry to use our cotton, produce, and sell in the market. But who don't have yet the capacity to fill up the you market know, entirely? With chicken and the egg, what comes first? Well, how will they build the capacity if you don't support them? But then you'd, you support them by blocking the others, but they can't be able yeah. to fulfill as but well. Th th that's the conversation we're having. Mm. And we say that we can now give them a sunset kind of clause that mm. by this time, you should have done this. Or else, we shall Really, and actually, very, you know, <laughs> you have one of the most logical politicians in this country. In the name of the pre is a is a, 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 very, a very good economist, and he understood everything and said, "Oh, so you agreed with the traders on this? Then that is good." But then there was a lot of disagreement in the leaderships of the traders. Mm. There is a certain section which was saying, I think, the other ones are selling them out. You, you see, in Uganda, it's a, a country of suspicion. Whenever you talk to people, they go back to talk to their constituents. They say, this one has been bought by government. We have never bought anyone, please. We just explained to them. So the Kasita trader said, please, let the president meet all the traders and talk to them so that they can get it from the horse's mouth. And that's how the meeting was arranged, uh, and they met. And I think the outcome is clear now. The other concern was on the penalties. Yes, I was uh, getting the third m genuine concern. The penalty was much higher than what they could afford. I know penalties really to, to stop people from uh, committing crime, but uh, it wouldn't be so wise to penalize an average trader selling a few things, six mm. million <coughs> shillings, because he has not uh, registered or he has switched off IFRIS and so on. So that one we said it should be reviewed. But also the president has directed that the, 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 the accumulated penalties should first be uh, 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 stopped. They shouldn't pay until we have reviewed the penalty itself and we see where, where we shall be. And I think, really, the head of state was reasonable. He balanced it up. He understood us as government on where we come from in needing to have the IFRIS as a system to reduce informality 
mm. and the tax evasion. That's all. Nobody is going to pay much more money. Th there were also people saying, you see, if this is very expensive to set up, it mm. is taking our money. We told them, look, the first money we deduct is your initial investment. You don't pay that tax. Equivalent of what you have initially invested, we deduct it. Number two, we have put up uh, application is to use just a phone, this phone here, mm. to do to do e -freeze. You just get the, an application here and uh, you and it is well done. You do the the e okay. yes. So uh, it is something which I think uh, uh, mirrored really that uh, the traders, who are our partners, should actually appreciate that it is good for business. It's mm. good for the economy itself. Government will get more money. And at the same time, you will have, you will see your businesses now Growing. having fair competition and they grow. Oh, well, our time is really fast spent and I would like to say a very special thank you to you uh, for sparing time. But maybe in just 30 seconds, on rationalization, how far? Is it entirely done or do we have another phase? Because the last time you were here, you said, I think we need to rationalize the whole government. Mm. And then just a few weeks into which the president appoints another section of RDCs. You have RDC, you have deputy, then you have vices mm. coming through. Aren't we moving two steps forward and three no, backwards? No, we are rationalizing government. Rationalization is all. Rationalization but does we are not mean. More. Yeah, you may create when you have removed also. It is rationalization. Uh, what uh, I should tell you is that the agencies we started with, that one is ongoing. Okay. Then in this very tenfold growth strategy, hmm. one of the preconditions for achieving it is actually to rationalize government. Uh, and within the course of next, you know, few years, you will see a number of things happening in getting the government smaller and neater. All right, thank you very much, Mr. Thank Ramadan you. Govi, for sparing time to be with us. And to our viewers, those who've been following, thank you so much for following through. Uh, for your questions, more and more, we'll definitely ensure that these are actually answered. But that's all we had time for. I am Mildred Tohai. Say good morning and God bless you.